I'm Stacey Zinn Roberts, and I'm the host of Live Your Passion. We're coming to you today from the Golf Industry Show. It's in Orlando this year. About 15,000 people from all over the world have converged on Orlando and the Convention Center to talk golf. And I have one of the coolest people in the entire building with me. Thank you. <laughs> Scott Hollister is the editor-in-chief of Golf Course Management magazine. And Golf Course Management is the official publication of the Golf Course Superintendents Association of America. It's really a big deal. I'm so excited he's here. <laughs> Scott, Scott Hollister, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. Appreciate <laughs> you having me. Oh, I'm so excited. Good to be here. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so, um... You have the unique opportunity to combine two of your greatest loves, golf and writing. How did this happen for you? How, when were you, how were you able to combine both golf and writing? Uh, by chance isn't the right way to say it, but um, I was interested in uh, writing. In, in college, and that's what I pursued, a degree in mass communications. Mm -hmm. um, my, my other interest was broadcast, uh, and in particular radio, and so that was something uh, that I was really interested in, but at the time of my graduation, I was really just, you know, like a lot of people, just looking for work. So uh, I was applying at um, newspapers, at radio stations, and wasn't having much luck, and I kind of reached the point. I said, I, I need to see which one of these pans out, and uh, that might, <laughs> the first offer I get might be the, the way that I go. So I uh, um, got a job offer at a little paper in Ottawa, Kansas, which is about a, it's a 10,000 circulation newspaper, and it's about an hour south and west of Kansas City, and uh, offered to be the sports editor there. Ooh. So I took the opportunity and covered a lot of high school sports and small college sports. And uh, I stayed as a sports writer for about a decade. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of different other smaller newspapers. I moved up to the Kansas City area and was uh, working right. at a paper in Kansas City, Kansas, and then a suburban daily okay. in, in Olathe, Kansas. And after, about, after that amount of time, um, I, I was kind of looking for a change. I wanted to continue to write, and uh, fortunately, through my sports writing connections, I knew some people that worked at the Golf Course Superintendents Association, and they kind of helped me find out about an opening on the magazine staff, and I applied, and uh, fortunate enough to uh, to get that job, and that was 15 years ago. Wow. I know I know I don't look it right in here, <laughs> but... Uh, 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 it's yeah, been 15 years with 15 the 15 years, years with the association, and it's been a, it was it was a great change for me. I was looking for a, you know a, a change of pace from newspapers. I wish I could say I knew the whole internet thing was coming and the uh, struggles of, of daily newspapers. Um, I wasn't that smart, but uh, it's been a good it's been a good change and a, a good place to work because it has a, um, has kind of connected me uh, kept me connected with sports. Yes. And in particular with the game of golf. Did you know that you wanted to be a sports writer or that was just, you knew I that was very I really, focused. yeah, I, you know, my, my educational background was, was more balanced. It was news and everything else like that. Um, but I knew uh, uh, that was my preference, sports. I did some play-by-play -play broadcasting um, in, in both college and then in Ottawa, Kansas. There was a little AM country station that did the high school and local college games, and I was lucky enough to get to do those, too. So that was, uh, I, I really knew I wanted to be involved with sports. So. Where, does the, where does the passion for golf come from? Probably my, dates back to my, grand, my grandfather, um, my grandfather on my father's side, um, he, my mother's family was from the East Coast, mm -hmm. uh, from Connecticut, but my, uh, so they had moved back here, so I knew them, but locally my, my father's d dad um, was a golfer, and so he asked me, uh, he kind of first took me out to, to play the game, and um, kind of got me, got me hooked, and I played through uh, high school. And wasn't quite good enough to uh, to play past that. I, I always say everyone has that aha moment at some point where you realize you can't play at the next level. There's always some next level, and mine was I could play at high school, but college just wasn't going to work out for me. So, um, so I just I concentrated on my on my studies and uh, um, 
I didn't play very much in college, um, but then kind of got reacquainted with it, and obviously my connection now here at GCSAA allows me to be to stay close to the game, even if I'm not playing it as often as I. Uh, my life. Uh, may I ask your handicap? Is that just that's mean? A lot of times it's my swing. It's my <laughs> yeah. handicap. It's uh, uh, I'm about a, a 16 or 17 when that's I'm playing. Not bad. No, no, I'm I can occasionally get myself around the golf course. It's it's been a matter of, of, of playing time lately. Uh, my kids are at an age where uh, they've got a lot of their own activities, and so I only played about 10 or 12 times last year. Actually, played. I was on a golf course way more than that just right. to work. But actually, taking the taking the sticks and the balls out, and, uh, it was only about ten or twelve times last year. One of those was at Pinehurst number two, Ooh. which was totally awesome. I hung a tidy 101 or something on the board, and it was the first time I'd played in months. So to go on a course that's hosting a U.S. Open and try to discover your game is not really the way to go about it. But it was fun. But you got to do it. I did. There was you a caddy and everything. It was Ooh. awesome. If you're <laughs> if you're ever doubting whether to play with a caddy, do it. I was so apprehensive about it, um, but it was a great experience. They were super fun. Why? What, what was what was so good about it? They they were funny. Very quickly, you realize you're not the worst golfer they've ever seen. That's good. And uh, there's some people out there with a lot of money that like to go play Piners Number Two, and they just stink at golf. So, <laughs> um, but it was they were helpful. They told great stories, and so after a couple of holes, it was just, you know, it was a, it was a ball. It was the right thing to do. Yeah, it was fun. So what's it like for you to combine your passion for sports and for golf with what you do every day, which is writing? What does that feel like to you? Uh, it's it, it keeps you motivated. Um, it's uh, a fun way to go about, you know, having a profession, doing your job, but having that, ex that kind of internal push to, to, to keep going and uh, you know sometimes it's difficult to uh, to keep that hey this is stuff this is all stuff that I really like this is stuff that um, that got me in it uh, at first and your job always changes I mean your career is you if you if you progress and get promoted or things change and in publishing obviously things change all the time so sometimes you're not always doing what it was that first got you in the business but as long as you remember that the core of why you're doing this is are those things it's your passion for golf passion for writing for the art of journalism the science of journalism to um, if you can keep that in mind it does it does it does keep you motivated and, and going and it's been very important the last couple of months I mean we're just we're so busy leading into this event mm -hmm. um, we which have is the golf industry golf show, industry show. People sorry here. the show, Stacy's going to Photoshop a, a picture <laughs> of the logo we back there we wanted to have something there and nobody could <laughs> instead, spare one yeah instead we've got the uh, the brown wall but uh, it's a big it's a big endeavor we've got a staff at GCSA headquarters of about 85 employees. Um, which is not a not a small operation, but however, when you put on a show of this magnitude, mm -hmm. bringing fifteen thousand people to a city and one hundred eighty thousand square feet of exhibit space, it's a it's quite an undertaking. So we're all uh, we're all running on caffeine and fumes. Absolutely, right and, now. and the people who are here too are golf course superintendents, golf course architects, owners, developers, people who build golf courses. So it's pretty much every part of golf yeah, except right for uh, teaching pros. Right. right, and it's a really interesting group. Um, so, you you had talked about something earlier. You you touched on the aha moment, and that's something I talk about all the time. Mm -hmm. Where um, I created the What's Your Avocado concept that says that everyone has something about them that's special. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody Everybody's does. Back. Everybody, and we call that unique element your avocado. And so the key is is, is to identify the avocado, the thing that makes you why you're here, mm -hmm. and and then act on it. So I always ask. What was the aha moment, the avocado moment, when you knew what you were here to do and how you were going to do it? It was probably in college. Um, I had already started down the path of, of journalism and, and writing and things like that. Um, but I remember some times when I actually finally got to sit in a real press box and do real sports writing things and uh, uh, <laughs> even though it was just a, for the college newspaper and the college radio station it was uh, just such a you know you're on the air if you're doing a, a football game I, the small college that I went to had a really good football team back then and so it was kind of a big deal that we were covering these games and um, 
you know, it's a, you're there several hours beforehand, the game's three hours long, you're there for 30 minutes afterwards, it's this huge chunk of time. And all my friends are running off to back to the fraternity house or out going out with friends. And I was still, and I kind of realized that I didn't, wasn't missing it. That I was kind of just the, the six or seven hours sitting in the press box, setting up equipment, um, doing the game, things like that. Wasn't, it wasn't, didn't feel like seven hours. I got done in my mind. It seemed like I was an hour, an hour long. So. I just got the chills. So, yeah, that was, that was probably, uh, that was probably yet sitting in dirty old press boxes. <laughs> but you know, what, what you just said, though, is that, that you, there was a sense of timelessness. And, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that I teach in my workshop, that you know you're, you're pretty close to what you're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. is if you have a sense of timelessness. Right. You can't tell how long. Deepak Chopra talks about being in your bliss, mm -hmm. and that's what he says, that if you could be doing something for five minutes or five hours and not know. Yeah. So you knew early on. Yeah. That's so great. Yeah, and it was... I, Little dirty press boxes. It doesn't matter. You knew what Kansas. it was. Kansas, yeah. yeah. And you've had the opportunity to interview some really interesting people mm -hmm. within golf. You were with Annika Stor yeah. Sorenstam. Just a few, just a little less than an hour ago. So, yeah. And tell the audience who she is if, if, if you don't know. Annika um, Sorenstam is one of the most accomplished women's golfers in history. Girl um, power. Yes, so in the World Golf Hall of Fame. Uh, she had won 10 major titles. Um, very accomplished, and she was the winner of our association's uh, highest national award, uh, which is the old Tom Morris Award. So uh, I was working with her to get her here for the presentation, and uh, we had a little news conference with her, and she's fantastic, just a really a delightful person. Uh, her husband, Mike, they're just, Mike McGee, just great, normal people. We sat around for a half hour before she went on with uh, Kelly Tillman of the Golf Channel, who was here to do the interview. And it was just this normal conversation, and I, I didn't want to tell her that I was up off and on all night long worrying about how all this would, would, would go, and uh, which I very rarely have sleepless nights, but I had one leading into this thing. So for, to have it go as well as it did and have them to be so nice and so accommodating was, was really awesome. That's wonderful. Yeah. And uh, anybody else of note that you can think of that you've Well, you know, back in my sports writing days, there were a lot. I, I interviewed uh, Cal Ripken, Jr., wow. uh, shortstop, Baltimore Orioles. Uh, he's in the Baseball Hall of Fame. He was a fantastic guy. Um, and uh, spent a little bit of time covering uh, uh, the Kansas City Royals because the papers I was working at were in the Kansas City Royals. So I got a chance to interview uh, guys like Cal Ripken, uh, Bo Jackson, right. uh, interviewed before. One of my most memorable, and it's a little sad now, is that I'm not sure if people are familiar with Tommy Morrison, who was a boxer, a uh, heavyweight boxer, held a, held a heavyweight championship for a little while uh, when George Foreman and guys like that were fighting. He did stuff before he made the grill. You see, he was a boxer. <laughs> and, um, uh, and Tommy Morrison was in the one of the Rocky movies, I want to say Rocky Five. Oh. And he's a Kansas City guy. <clears throat> and when I was in Ottawa, the Ottawa High School had won some school contest in the state of Kansas, and the, the award was that Tommy Morrison came into town for lunch. Well, as a sports editor in this town, I got hooked up and spent pretty much an entire morning and had lunch with Tommy Morrison, and uh, tragically, he developed uh, AIDS. Oh. At some point, had to stop boxing and uh, passed away just this last year, oh, finally, and at the age of about 40. But, and so it was... When he passed away, his, he'd kind of faded from the limelight. I had a chance to kind of think back on the day I spent with him. At the time, was really was really awesome because I'm just out of college, a little guy in a you know, 10,000 circulation paper in Ottawa, and here comes the future heavyweight champion of the world in. So the other person, one of the other person I would mention is Maurice Green, who was the world's fastest man, <gasps> yes, won, yes, won yes, Olympic yes, gold yes, medal. Yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, his track career is over now, but Maurice Green was from Kansas City as well. And uh, so when he was uh, just getting started, uh, the paper I was working for at that time in Kansas City got me connected with him. So that was really cool after interviewing him as a young track star to see him go on and win an Olympic, Olympic gold medal and things like that was really cool, uh, neat experience. So. And I don't, tell me if you have had the same experience. I mean, I interviewed I have interviewed probably 3,000 people in my lifetime. I'm sure you probably about yeah. the same. Yeah. And you develop a really intense connection with someone when mm -hmm. you interview them. And then they go away and they, and they live their lives and you live their lives and mm -hmm. you may never see them again. Mm -hmm. But like you said, when Tommy passed, 
it was like a friend died, don't you think? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, because I, I related those memories so much to um, that part of my life uh, mm -hmm. in, in Ottawa, and just you know, just learning uh, what I was what I was getting myself into, <laughs> and uh, so it was it was it did it did bring back memories uh, of of that time. Um, a lot of people I worked with at the paper aren't there anymore. The paper has changed a great deal in Ottawa, so um, it was a neat way to kind of go back and to go back and uh, revisit that. Time. Revisit it. It was sad, and I knew his, I knew his story and his his life had, had taken an unfortunate turn um, uh, with the AIDS and with some denial on his part of, of what he was going through. Oh. Um, and it was it it made it was making national news, so I had kept up with that. But um, it, it did remind me. It was I guess it was a good memory of a nicer time. Um, yeah. when I got a chance to connect with them. And it is a privilege to be able to tell people's story. I'm so mm. glad you'll sit here with me and tell me yours. I'll do it. Yes. Do it. Busy day. So, but happy to do it. Tell me, uh, in our final question, okay. what advice, because you live your passion, you mm -hmm. obviously do, that's the name of this show, mm -hmm. what advice would you give to other people who want to live their passion, especially someone who wants to write and has a, a subject yeah. matter that... I would, someone? I would, my, my primary advice would be just stick with it. Keep mm -hmm. at it. Um, I didn't, I had friends and colleagues who advanced quicker than I did in terms of professionally or landed at locations, newspapers that might be considered more prestigious than what I did. But I, I was pretty determined that I wasn't, that I was going to work my way up the ranks if that's what it took. It would have been great to land at the Chicago Tribune or the New York Times or somewhere like that right off the bat, but that doesn't happen for a, from a. Kansas kid right out of a small college, so um, I, I would just encourage you to stick with it and, and keep pushing forward. Um, great experiences at every level yeah. of, of my career path uh, that I s still go back to today, so just kind of embrace what you're doing and uh, keep moving forward. Don't let it, don't let the, everything's a learning opportunity, so just keep on. Keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. That's good advice. Yeah, Best way for people to get in touch with you? Probably email, especially this week. My, <laughs> my, my phone is, boy, I'm already about down to 40%. It's not even lunch yet. Um, so, yeah, email, which is shollister at gcsaa.org. And, and we will put that on the Live Your Passion TV website so you can get a direct okay. link to right. you. Yeah. Happy to answer any questions or anything. Scott, thank you so You're much for welcome. taking your time, especially on this day. You're welcome. I You're appreciate welcome. it. It's Thanks good to much. have you. Yep. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you. And I will just say, I'm Stacey Zinn Roberts. Scott Hollister. Coolness. This has been Live Your Passion. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.